At Midway USA, we know the AR-15 is one of the most popular rifles in modern American history. Known for its modularity and widespread use, it's often considered essential to any gun collection. The essential things you need to run an AR-15 are usually always in stock during shortages, things like magazines and 5.56 ammo. Whether you're looking to buy a new AR-15 or buy parts for your modern sporting rifle, log on and for just about everything for the outdoors, shop MidwayUSA.com. Midway USA brand product designers have one straightforward goal. Develop high-quality, technically sound products and deliver them to customers at reasonable prices. If you are immersed in the shooting sports industry and pay close attention to every single detail, you know our products are built right and stand up to everyday use. Who has shooting mats and range bag systems to hunting clothing and just about everything for the outdoors? Log on and shop 24-7 with super-fast shipping. MidwayUSA.com Another week's podcast is episode 244 with the Outdoor Drive. Like, super excited. This is a great podcast. We actually sat down in person with Kea Mauser and Richard Johnson. So, um, this is your boy, East Coast Trev, and I'm joined with the good buddy, Mr. Madman Mardik. What up? What up, dude? Are you pumped? Two fo- what? 244. I like that number, 44. 244. Why yeah. why do you like that number? It's, it's just a good number. I it's like just it. a good number. Okay. Speaking yeah. of a number, um dude, are you ready for Canada? Like we're we're punch, punching down I'm, the I think it's the last podcast before you leave, dude. Yeah, buddy. I'm uh I'm not packed, but I'm organized. So Okay. I wa- I washed some clothes, some hunting clothes that hadn't really been washed since like the end of deer season, mm-hmm. you know. Um, cleaned up some of that stuff. Did you get rid um, of the skunk got... spe- spray? Nope. It... Still smells like skunk. Oh. You know, I'm a little worried about crossing the border with those pants because I don't want them to like <laughs> search the vehicle and smell the skunk and, you know, think I'm exporting goods. Yeah. Well, this but, is, <laughs> um, then, then, uh, they might find a sandwich baggie full of borax or something <laughs> <laughs> for your fan. When you come back into town. <laughs> All right. Well, it smells like skunk, and you got a bag full of white powdery substance. Yeah. Well, I I would probably leave that at the border. <laughs> don't <laughs> don't bring that over so, with you. Um, no, man. I'm ready to rip for the most part. Like I said, I'm, I'm organized. I'm just not. I'm not folded and packed. But um, yeah. I'm rolling out of here Sunday morning. I got GPS says it's like seven hours and twenty minutes, but you figure. I'm going to lose a little bit of time, you know, stopping to get something to eat, stopping at the border, stopping to get gas. So uh, I'm going to try to get up there like, you know, two, three in the afternoon. I'm going to shoot the shotgun real quick on paper just to make sure everything's good and uh, and maybe try to roost some birds Sunday night and get after them Monday morning. That's awesome, dude. You must be pumped up, dude. Like, just like, what what is the feeling in the mind here? Uh, I don't know, dude. I'm like... I'm kind of nervy, bro. Like it's, I know it's just a turkey, but like to me, it's like it's a big deal of a turkey hunt. So obviously, you want you want success, right? Like you got to get it done, mm-hmm. and uh, and not not really knowing what you're getting yourself into as far as terrain and vegetation and location and bird density and how are the birds going to act? Are they going to be gobbling their head off? Are they going to be tight lipped like they've been at home or, you know what I mean? Weather. It's just all the anticipation of what goes into any kind of hunting trip, you know? Do you think that it will be a little bit different because we're in a little bit different latitude line than you are here where like, it's a little bit colder, a little bit behind the time. Like, I mean, I'm not a biologist. My gut tells me they've got to be like a week or two behind us, right? It's it's no different than why like Maine, Maine season always starts after us and ends after us. Right. The farther, you know, the farther south you are, you know, you go all the way down to Florida, Georgia, Alabama, they start way before us. Right. And then you go north of us, they start after us and, and end after us. So being even farther north, I would think they've got to be a week or two behind us in the breeding cycle. Um, go back to our main trip last year. That was last week of May. And it was, it was, it was pretty late, right? The way, as far as the way the birds were, but I'm going to Canada would be like a week earlier than we went to Maine last year. Mm -hmm. So from what I've heard, I talked to a couple people the other day, they said it's prime time in Maine right now. Like 
solo birds just doing their thing and they're like super killable so come on now i'm hoping uh i'm hoping i find the same thing in canada and you know what i really want you know what i i would give my left you know what for right now is just a bluebird high pressure day to turkey hunt dude if that's not the truth i don't know what i is. feel like and i i sound whiny and like a crybaby but i mean i had five days at the beginning of the season and then a following weekend i, I feel like it's been a low pressure system and cloudy with a chance of rain every single day of turkey hunted this year and i mean you can get it done i, I killed the bird i've been on birds but Dude, it's just not the same, man. They don't gobble the same. They don't. They don't get as fired up as as they do. But as when you get those high pressure days and the and the and the sun shining, you know, it's so true. And it, you know, we talk about it a lot. When, you know, because we talk on the phone all the time. Like, dude, it's been tough. Like, it's been genuinely tough. Like, it. I don't know what it is. Like, the the rain, the everything that comes along with it is just like you're not getting the gobbles that you want to be getting. You're not getting the interaction the num- that you were getting. Oh, it's just sad. It's yeah. like it just it hurt it hurts my feelings to even think about it right now. Like it's tough. Yeah. It's super yeah. tough. You know? And it's I and mean it's I, been I got my ass absolutely handed to me Sunday in Rhode Island. I mean, Anything. dude, I can't say I can't say Humble that I didn't either. Humble pie, buddy. Humble pie. Like I, I swear to God, I walked seven miles and did not hear a gobble. Well, that's that's the one thing with turkey hunting that definitely it will do that. Uh, when mm. you think that you have it figured out and you think that it's good, well, you better hold on to your britches because you're about to be humbled. And that's mm-hmm. you know when you think that you know what you're doing, you will be humbled. And that's that's the good thing about. Um, it's a good thing about yeah. turkey. Hunting. Good thing about and, turkey. Uh, Saturday, I found a bird deep in some public. I I I tracked my way out. I was like one point eight miles from the truck, but I found a bird, and he wanted to die. He I know he did. He told me he was like, "Hey, I really want you to kill me right now." The only problem was he was on private ag, and he I know exactly where it was. He was on the edge of that field, facing me, gobbling his head off. And the only thing between me and him was like 90 yards of swamp. And I could not get that bird to come through that swamp. There was nothing I could do. And it, what can you do? You just got to leave him. Like, you you won. <laughs> and you were eight up in it. Just yeah. like, he, like, dude, he was prime, prime, prime. But he's still out there somewhere. Well, that's how it goes, man. I had the same thing. Not a lot of gobbles, tough four or five different pieces of public in Rhode Island learned a ton, you know, it was good, but it's just, you know, those things come man. I mean, them days that they just don't holler back, that little pressure definitely pushes on them and it is what it is. No, so true. Hey, speaking of, you know, we might not have success, but others do. Uh, you got any killers corners? Yeah. Ken D with another one. He's on five. That's number two. Uh, that's my boy. Looks like Caleb Keckler killed another one. Nice. Had a boy, oh, a boy up there, tagged in up in Massachusetts. That's good. Anybody else? Is that it? Is uh, it? Is I think that's it? it. I think we had a. Um, I'm gonna pull it up real quick. It's it been tough. A success, been a ground success story. But, Speaking um, of, uh, Caleb, who actually is on this podcast, has killed a couple of turkeys in New York. Uh, some studs actually at that. Um, so killer's corner. I'll throw him in there as a killer's corner. Caleb killed a couple. Dude, what a great dude. I had a great time with these guys. Yeah. No, Richard and Caleb, great guys, man. I, I you know, I got to hang out with them at ATA and that and you know, it's been it's been pretty cool. Um and actually it's kind of funny. He's, he uh the bird that he shot was I think uh one of my biggest New York birds. The uh, probably a 3-year-old, 21 pounds, 9 and 3 quarters, an inch and a half an inch and 3 a spurs. Hookies. Wow. Big ones. So, I love big spurs. Me too. I like big spurs, and I cannot lie. I can, you know, I've never weighed a bird. I don't. I was thinking about the other day. Everybody posts. You know, it's just the thing to do, right? Like you post the weight, the beard length, and the spur length. I have I, never weighed I'm a not bird. A big fan. And I don't even really measure. No. Measure beards anymore. I but I'll tell you what. The first thing I do is I look at those spurs. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big spur right. guy. Um, yeah. And one of the things I've actually became pretty pretty in tuned with is um the gizzard 
I take the yeah. rocks out of the yeah, gizzard. Yeah. I'm a huge fan. Yeah. And it's funny is different states that I've shot birds in, different areas, different regions within the state, um, different rocks. And it's really cool to look at them and line them all up and like the farmland to the, you know, to the mountains, to southern bay, southern birds, to northern birds. Like, you know, like my, 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 uh, um, Maryland bird, it's very like pebble stone, like gritty, like tan. Um, some of the stuff here is like that, you know, the granite, the mm-hmm. quartz, the, you know what I'm saying? Like that, like pretty cool. It's, it's cool mm-hmm. to watch. And that's one of the things, more of the things, cause I could care less about the beard. I've shot some pretty big beards, at, you know, 12, 13 inches. And I just, it's, it doesn't get me going, dude. It yeah. doesn't, I don't yeah. care about the beard. Like it doesn't, it doesn't. Same. The spurs is what gets it for me. The other thing that's cool too is uniqueness. And I don't think people really realize how often if you look, you know, you could have like a, I've shot one before with a barred tail fan or t- one tail feather yeah. in the middle that's barred. Yep. Or um, who was it? Was it Nakai the other day? He shot one that had like smoked wings. Yep. There's or, a, uh, yep. The one I shot last year on public land had that really dark tail fan. All black, no barring. And, and like sometimes you won't even notice it, but you really got to take a little extra time when you kill a bird and analyze it because you might find something unique about that bird. Yeah. And then the other cool thing too is if you think about it, when when we deer hunt, you know, with trail cameras and stuff, we have these target bucks and stuff. We pretty much know everything about these deer. And then when you kill them, you finally get your hands on them. And there's very rarely surprises, right? Like if a deer's mm-hmm. got a kicker or a sticker or something, non- you already know. You just can't wait to see it up close. But when you're chasing a turkey, you don't know what he's got until you kill him. It's true. It's you true. You know what I mean? Like you're chasing a gobble and you don't know what he's got for a beard or, or, or spurs or a unique tail feather or anything like that until you put him on the ground and walk up to him and, and get to check him out. You know, it's funny that you say that because to be honest with you, um, there's, there's some people that like will chase certain birds and I've never Mm. been able to do that because we don't hunt, um, you know, we don't hunt certain, certain birds or certain areas or whatever, but some guys will, you know, they'll go and actually hunt like the dudes from, uh, the cartel, um, game calls. Those guys, they literally were hunting a banded bird in Maine and shot it. Like mm. that was a thing. Um, somebody else just shot a banded one, but or the smoke I one. It. I saw a smoke one too. Uh, <sighs> like certain birds, which is kind of cool. I, Not- I feel like though, if you buzz a piece of public or close to public, and you saw a smoked bird, you're targeting that bird. Like you yeah, have to, no, no, absolutely, and and I I totally agree with you. I've just I've never found a bird like that that I wanted mm. to kill. Like, you know, you had the old one feather. Old one feather. You know, and like target in on him. I, I'm chasing a gobble. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. care, you know, yeah. what he looks like. But it's, 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 it is what it is. Um, pretty cool. Yeah. I don't, I don't really want to get into whole targeting specific turkeys. Like, I got enough gray hairs after chasing targeting. Yeah. Or target bucks that just stress me out. Uh, turkeys is just like I, I'm. I'm not really like prejudiced when it comes to turkeys. Like they all get shot. I I'm, I totally agree with you, man. <laughs> totally agree with you. <laughs> if it's got a full fan, it ain't getting no pass. That's for uh, sure. if it gobbles, it doesn't get a pass in my book. But hey, it is what it is. I did see a non first time I've ever had an encounter with a non gobbling Jake. Every every Jake I've really encountered, they got they gobble, right? Like I've never seen a Jake that wouldn't gobble, but I, I ran into one in a public parking lot last week that would not gobble. Well, it happens, so. dude. The the immature ones, but yeah, cool. Well, man, uh, good luck in in uh, Canada. Looking Canada. forward to the st- for the story. O A. Um, yeah, looking forward to that story and, and all the stuff that comes on with it. So you guys can follow along on social media. If he has service, I imagine you put some things up on there. I will try my best but to keep the story active. It's but Who knows? I tend to black out in the 
when in the moment and kind of forget to uh to do stuff like it's that. all right so, but when there's try. one hanging I, I, pro- I promise everybody if they want to follow along i will try to keep the story active yeah right okay but it's all good let's get on to the podcast this is with our partnership with Botech northeast and Botech itself um with K- kayla moser and richard johnson from halls archery if you guys are in the area local go and check out richard johnson over at halls archery here in manchester connecticut and then caleb um go and check out Botech. um take take the take the chance and uh go and shoot a Botech. um at I think that you will definitely like it. And then you guys can see all the breakdowns that we do as we go through and uh, tune in our bows, get you, get them all ready for this upcoming season, uh, trials and tribulations through that. Um, and it's just a good podcast, home hometown feel. Uh, we are in person. So let's, without further ado, let's get this thing on the road. Drive podcast. All right, guys, welcome back. Actually, we're live at the Halls Archery down in Manchester, Connecticut, and uh, this is, we haven't done a live one in a while, have we, Steve? Yeah, oh, this, this is, is nice. It is nice. I do like face doing them face. live. It's like it's like COVID all over again. You, you can't be in in person, so it's <laughs> let's get back to normal. Yeah, exactly. So uh, this is your boy East Coast Trev. I got Madman Mardik with me, and we're down in Halls. We have Richard and Caleb. So. Why don't you guys introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and a little bit about what you guys do. Uh, I'll start off for you. I'm Richard Johnson. Uh, I'm the owner of Hall's Arrow Indoor Archery in uh, Manchester, Connecticut. Uh, I've been working here for about 23 years, running it for about 13 to 15 years now, probably. Um, Done competition archery and uh, quite a bit of hunting through the years, obviously. Can't be in archery and it seems like can't be in archery and not be some kind of hunter, but there are target guys out there um just love all aspects of it the equipment part of it the shooting part of it how relaxing the archery uh it can be um and then the customers honestly archers it's one of the best customer bases you can have out there they are phenomenal to work with uh super dedicated to their craft so kind of like caleb yeah (laughs) yeah definitely (laughs) well uh i'm uh caleb moser here and uh I work with Botech uh, in the Pure Archery Group, so we're a uh, family of archery dedicated uh, professional companies, the best of the best, um, and I represent all the dealers um, and their shops in the New England area, Northeast. So uh, I travel around, I work with great guys like Rich uh, and other dealers, and we just get all the bows out there so that the consumers can try them out, check them out. Uh, and partner with great people out there who are like us, like-minded, who uh, just love archery at every facet, from hunting, target, uh, just the, the atmosphere. Uh, it's very family-like, uh, and we just want to grow it in every angle we can. So so you're you're virtually just based out of the New England area, northeast? Uh, yes, that's correct. So I'm uh, in New York, and I do all of uh, northern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York through Maine. So I work with every independent dealer out there, every shop out there that's selling our products, uh, which would be Bowtech Archery, uh, Excalibur Crossbows, Diamond Bows, uh, Ripcord Arrow Rest, Black Gold Sights, Tight Spot Quivers. Um, so it's a great company, great base. That's a mouthful. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot, but it's, uh, you know, everything you need on a bow to get it to take you from here to there. So shooting a bow, you probably need a rest, you probably need a quiver. So, so you two have worked together for quite some time richard and caleb yeah yeah uh i've known caleb since his prior endeavors to Botech, and he's been a rep for a long time and one of the the better reps out there uh dedicated to his job can always get the job done so uh that's pretty awesome caleb's a a great guy yeah we've had him god gotta be 13 15 years or more now we just rounded out 15 yeah he used to work prior with bear archery and all their affiliated companies so uh yeah, we've been doing it a long time, and I ran an independent dealer shop prior to that, so kind of been on both sides of the table here, and it's it's been good. It's been really good. So, mm-hmm. Caleb, how did you get into the whole thing? Uh, I actually started working at a local archery shop as just a general employee, um, and uh, 
then they thought I had uh, enough wits to put together bows and work on bows, so I took over archery, uh, and then managing the store, running the store, doing all the buying, all the selling, pretty much everything, and growing that store pretty significantly over a few years, and then I was contacted by the companies to see if I could represent them and grow their companies in the stores in this area, so it uh, kind of just bloomed from one thing to the other. So what are what are some of the you know the line? Why don't you go through a little bit of the the bow line right now and some of the products that you guys do offer? Um, so uh, this year with Bowtech, probably uh, that's going to be our most premier uh, compound bow line, uh, and we've launched some uh, pretty uh, amazing new product. It's our Core series. We have a Core SS and a Core SR, which is our Core Super Smooth and our core speed redefined. So we have a super smooth bow, um, just amazing cam feel. We wanted the best draw, the best cycle, something that all archers would love. Um, And then there's other archers out there who want speed, performance, the most they can get. So we gave that to you in a uh, speed bow. Um, Core uh, actually signifies that they're all fully integrated. So we have integrated sights that can go right into the riser on our bows. We have integrated rests that can mount right into the rest, integrated stabilizers, integrated quivers. So uh, it's kind of all the best in technology coming together here to to give you the best of the best with the supporting lines and uh, accessories around it. What what kind of separates them from all the other bows that are on the market now? Um, So there's a lot of good bows out out there on the market um, today. uh, I think that what really separates us is our uh, our deadlock technology and our cams. Our bows are the fastest bows to tune and set up on the market, um, and they're the most accurate bows on the market due to that uh, deadlock technology because I can set a perfect center shot on the bow and put it in the archer's hand, and then just by moving a simple uh, screw Allen key, can move the cams left to right to line them directly up um, for that archer and give them a perfect bullet hole, a perfect paper tune. Uh, and when a bow tunes that good to a person, they normally fall in love with it and they shoot really well with it. Um, and then I can switch it and tune it to another person in just a matter of minutes. Um, so it's very that, that ease of setup, that, uh, ease of tunability, and then that confidence and that, you know, reliability and just gives you accuracy. Like I've never seen before. And that's so, so changing and setting all those things they are, they're done with pr- virtually without a press. Oh, yeah, so we have mm-hmm. it. So pretty much you can adjust everything on the bow with just moving some screws, um, lock screws and turning them. Uh, we still recommend you go to you know an archery shop or your professional to help you set them up. Um, but they're very simple. We've got a lot of videos online as well where mm-hmm. you can see how they all work and check them out. But, yeah, it's it's neat stuff. I guess that's pretty cool because, like, say me and Steve are in camp together and, you know, something happens and we need a bow. Like, here, dude, you know what? I shot my deer. You have yep. you have a bow. Switch and then be the able draw to, length and you're ready to rock. That's huge. Mm-hmm. That's super huge, especially, like, because you know in traveling or whatever when you're, you know, hunting all over that things do happen. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's part of the game. Heck, you run out of arrows and you got to borrow your buddy's broadheads and they shoot different. You can just literally move something a millimeter and you're back on drilling oh, and, and, and little things like that. Um, yeah, they, they, they go a long way. So it, and even just when you're setting up your bow, you know, a broadhead can tune differently than a field point slightly depending on what you're using. So to have the ability to adjust your bow to those things so that it's always shooting perfectly straight i mean it's like hitting you know a nail on the head we say you want to swing at that straight on if you're swinging at it side to side you're not going to drive as far or penetrate as deep so Mm -hmm. and and you want to go into kind of the the comfort and performance side of of it also so all of our our cams and all of our bows um the modules on the bow which sets your draw length so they're adjustable in draw length so they fit a range of the most common sizes, um, but they have a comfort setting and then we can flip them so they have a performance speed setting. So it it really allows you to set the feel on the bow if you're more, you want a comfort hold all day or you want something that's really gonna rip and and be aggressive. Um, And then we've actually, you know, incorporated a few other things on our cams, our our time lock and stuff like that, where you can uh, micro adjust um, your valleys uh, without changing, 
you know, twisting up your cables and changing your speed and your performance and, and draw length and other things. Um, so you can really set that bow to if you're a person who wants a, a giant valley with a great smooth feel that sits there all day to something that's very aggressive with a small short wall mm -hmm. um, that's really going to rip. It, you can tailor it to the person and the archer and what they really like. And and one of that is that, that you can definitely, you know, you're opening the, the market to so many different people that wanted to have different things out of their bow because like what Steve wants out of his bow and what I want out of my bow are two different two different people but you can do it in one bow which is kind of it, it's kind of pretty cool actually is there another bow on the market that does anything remotely close to that i would say no, as far as like for bow tech out of the box having tunability where a customer or a, a customer can actually start playing with their own equipment bow tech's hand down right up there on that um no other bow really has that much adjustability where you can do it yourself you know most people are you know stuck going to their shop a lot of people are very reliant on their shop right. but as you said hey you get out in the middle of nowhere and now all of a sudden you're tweaking and you're playing you do have that adjustability but as you said everybody's a little different trevor right every you know somebody wants speed somebody wants this somebody wants that i want more wall i want this you can do that with that bow tech mm -hmm. you can customize it and make that bow feel exactly the way they want and what I've found through the years, the more comfortable you are with an item, the better you're going to shoot it. And Bowtech really, really hits that nail on the head. And a big thing the is, ability. is confidence, too. If, you, yep. if you're comfort, comfortable and you're confident in it, then you're obviously going to hit your target. I mean, yep. that's just like, I think that's like 85% of it, to yep. be honest with you, when you're when in the archery world. What, mm -hmm. what, what do you think, Caleb? Oh, that's, that's my <laughs> saying every day when I'm selling bows. I said... <laughs> You know, Nike, Adidas, and Reebok, they all make a size 11, but they all fit your foot real different. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it fits your hand and you're better, you're going to be a better archer with it. Yep. Um, so that's how we always test out any brand of bow or any model mm -hmm. of bow. We put them in the people's hands, and, and it once you shoot one, you love it. When you shoot a second one, you like one better than the other. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I really go into your pro shop, working with them to shoot a couple different models of bows in your price range. Then you can really see what you gravitate towards and what fits you the best and you'll be a better archer because of that and, and you'll have more success in whatever archery you're doing so so it's kind of funny is like when we when we first started talking to you caleb and we were we were talking about you know our partnering up and everything with halls and every and all this you're just like go down to the shop and shoot them because we we would just we were unsure right mm -hmm. we we're like i don't know we never you know we've we've been so set in our brands and what we want or what we like yep. and and we went down and we shot them, and it's funny is we had the SS and the SR, right? And we had them side by side. And then we start we shot one, you know, me and Steve, and then we go in to shoot the other one, and we're like, I don't know which one I like better. <laughs> we're like, we're him and hauling back and forth, and I'm like, I don't really see the difference. Like, there's, you know, there is minute differences between them, and it's like what you want to get out of it. But they're both are like you said they're they're both a size 11 nike yep. i mean it's just yep. they they fit it's just what 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 color laces you want on yep. them honestly and i see it it gets even more difficult from there if if you're a shop that say has only bow tech you know that's hard enough decision as it is between their carbon bow and the ss and the sr that's a hard decision now if i have three or four different manufacturers and I'm trying mm -hmm. to get somebody to come in to make a decision. It's a hard decision because they are all so good and they're all so close. And it's just what feels the difference to you. And I see a lot of people nowadays where they may have used to shoot a different brand like Matthews or Bowtech. And then they try that, you know, this other bow and it's like, hey, I'm going to go to this one. Mm -hmm. This one feels a little better. And a lot of people I've noticed through the years is they can be very brand loyal, mm -hmm. which obviously that's that's fantastic. And then all of a sudden they shoot something else and they're like, wow, there, there is other good stuff out there. You and know? that's the thing is you definitely get so caught up in, in, in shooting certain brands. Like, I, you know, I had shot with a brand for forever mm -hmm. and like, just like that, you're die hard on it. Right. And I, so I tell guys like guys are like, Hey Trev, what bow do you shoot? And I go, it doesn't matter what I shoot. You should go to your bow shop, your local bow shop, and just literally set up four or five bows and see, see which one is going to reach out to you because yep. the ones that are, you know, the top tier bow to you. They're going to reach out to you and you're going to know which one is right for you. You know what I'm yeah, saying? And like those exactly. brands have put out those bows. It's just like, you know, like Bowtech in itself, like they put out bows they know that are going to fit. So they're, they're willing to put their, their fourth front forward and you're going to, you're going to pick the right bow for you. Yep. You know, it's like we said before, at the end of the day, whatever you're the most comfortable with. Right. 
That's one of, all that matters. One of the things I was most worried about is shooting the same bow manufacturer for 20 years was the grip. So if I pick up a PSE, like, get it out of my hand. It just feels terrible. Just not saying that they're bad, but they don't fit my hand. It just doesn't It just doesn't feel right. And trying out the Bowtech, I was like, I hope it feels good in my hand. Well, they have adjustable grip, so you can make it fit your hand how you like it. Mm-hmm. You know, and I does anybody else have an adjustable grip like that? A lot of guys are ripping grips off and putting aftermarket grips yeah. on their bow that they just bought. But uh, Bowtech just put it right there, loosen the screw, change the grip angle, and you're good to go. Caleb, what is some of the benefits to having a changing grip? Well, it, it's like he says, uh, Steve here, that, uh, you know, guys are putting on aftermarket everything, aftermarket strings, aftermarket grips, um, and, and uh, it's amazing that on, you know, flagship bows that a grip can make such a big difference but it, it does and, and if there's an archer who say been shooting bows for 30 or 40 years versus a newer archer their hand may have been become accustomed to more larger grips or say whatever they were used to shooting versus younger kids who like a, a different grip or, or they've only grown up shooting certain you know bows um the the beauty of an adjustable grip is depending on your bow and your bow size and everything it can allow you when you increase your angle and stuff to push your hand into different positions more into the riser up into the riser and it allows you to hold that bow steady or different and you know depending on your structure and build of your hand then you can really conform it for what's right right for you i like i tend to find a lot of archers on like a longer bow will like to increase an angle on their grip um so you, you get some some features like that um from an adjustable grip and people don't even realize they might like an adjustable grip until they actually shoot it so yep. like i hand them a flat grip and they shoot it and then i hand them a bow with that same bow with a three percent angle and they're like wow that pushes my hand so much better it mm-hmm. makes me a little more stable and a little more accurate um and it's those little things that make it for you like you say because by the time you and i set up the same exact bow it's completely set up for mm-hmm. you and completely set up for me and, and unique and built to the individual and i think that's why we i love archery so much is that it is completely unique and built for the individual for you to to succeed and be successful with it so i think that the rabbit holes that you can get into as far as archery goes like you know you might shoot a 475 you might shoot a 600 you might shoot and and, but it all in one encompasses a really good conversation at the end of the day it's like well why do you do that or why Mm -hmm. do you do that and then you could open up your 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 mind and that's kind of what is attracting me to the whole bow tech thing is because there's so many things to change and me and steve have had like hundreds of conversations like bro you gotta see this youtube video this is what they're doing you know what i'm saying to kind of like you kind of tear down some of like the really cool things that you can do with it it's actually it's intriguing it really is to like what what you can actually get out of the bow it's it is it, it's definitely setting itself aside from from some of the other bow manufacturers out there and being on top i mean what is it 25 years caleb oh yeah we're this is our 25th anniversary year this year, so uh, yeah, we've been doing a lot. We've been doing it for a while here. It's going to be a, a, a great year for us. We've got a lot of cool stuff this year already with our launch that we came out with this year, and then we're, we've got a lot of cool stuff coming, actually, yeah. this year, you know, for our 25th anniversary, so... What is any anything special for twenty five years? I mean, um, so we've just actually just announced um, that we're going to do a Bowtech uh, the rally event, and uh, this is going to be a, an extremely cool event. Um, it's the last weekend um, in July here, um, and I'm sure you guys are uh, familiar with other three D shooting kind of archery party weekend events, as I call them. Um, this is going to be a Bowtech only one. Uh, there will be other manufacturers there, boot manufacturers, tree saddle manufacturers, that kind of stuff. It's pretty much going to be a big Bowtech weekend party last weekend in July. Um, Bowtech owners invited only the first day and then general public the next two days. Uh, we're going to watch a limited edition 25th anniversary bow, um, some 25th anniversary swag. It's going to be concerts, um, bar, campfire. There's going to be a lot of events for the kids. Uh, we're gonna have kid shoots, uh, five three D courses. They've got a loose slide, zip line. It's just gonna be a great weekend, uh, and, and just really, you know, we wanted to have our own bow tech event. It's a give back to the customers, uh, appreciative of everybody who owns our bows. Uh, dealers are invited for free. Um, it's just a just a great thing, and we just really want it's something to help us connect with our customers at an even deeper level of how we want it to be with that lifestyle and around the campfire and extremely social because you know that's what archery is as a sport you know and how we see it and and want to you know 
keep that going. So I think it'll be a really great weekend. It's our first one ever. And, uh, you know, for more details, we just got to save the date out, you know, and it's we'll see how many people can come and be a great time. That's pretty cool. Birthday weekend, too. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Well, it's the week a little bit after. But, yeah, close enough, right? <laughs> You're 25th, too, right? <laughs> yeah, 25th, right? Bring yeah. your family and close get a B&B. Yes. <laughs> 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 what, what other events are you guys doing, Caleb? Um, so we are uh, one of the title sponsors for the Total Archery Challenges, the TAC events. So those have been uh, pretty huge in archery. Um, we're also running a Reinhardt 100 up here right now. That's going to be a good event for us. We've also partnered with the Mountain Archery Festival guys, so we'll be running all their national events um, and be one of the title sponsors for them. Uh, in New England specifically, we're going to be running the Hunt Stock events. Uh, we also run all the independent dealer events at your local archery shops. Uh, you can log into, you know, like the Bowtech Northeast Facebook page and see where we're at and where our booths are at. And we're always, you know, check out the bows, running specials, get you some swag. We're just all about growing archery in every level and, and love meeting with you guys and anybody out there to come in and see what we've got going on. So, yeah, we've, we've got a lot going on for this year. It's going to be an exciting year um and you know it's it's really growing i think you know we're known as as one of the most premier brands in the marketplace and with these partnerships these events i think it's just going to keep taking it to that that level of of these are our people those are our archers and the people who we can really connect knives machetes saws and shears multi-tools shovels swords axes spears hatchets and tomahawks if it cuts snips slices or chops midway usa has it Find great gift ideas in our huge selection of pocket knives and other everyday carry folding knives. Make a statement or create a family legacy with one of our top-of-the-line hunting knives. We've got a great selection of manual and electric sharpeners, too. For just about everything for the outdoors, check out MidwayUSA.com. Boat Trader is America's largest boating marketplace with over 100,000 boats to choose from. We offer simple, comprehensive solutions for those looking to sell, find, and finance new or used boats. Visit BoatTrader.com to get started. Whether you're just looking to stay warm during a hunt or need maximum concealment, the clothing you wear can make or break a hunt. At MidwayUSA.com, we understand hunting clothing has come a long way with more meticulously crafted camo patterns, advanced scent control technologies, and weatherproof options to withstand the elements. Hunters have to wait until their favorite season but shouldn't wait on gear, which is why Midway USA offers super fast shipping. When you're ready for your next system, log on to MidwayUSA.com. With, so, uh, it's good. You know, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So, Especially being New England. I mean, New England is one of those, you know, a lot of people don't talk about New England as much as, or the Northeast, right? Like, it's not a talked about place, but it's probably... It's one of the most magical places. I say it all the time. Like, you could be in the tuna grounds in an hour. You can be, you know what I'm saying? And, like, people, like, they knock on New England as a whole. Like, there's good deer here. We, you know, bear hunting. There's a lot of things that come down in New England that a lot of people don't talk about at all. And it's kind of scary, honestly. It's, it's like you, Caleb, and, and you, Rich, you guys travel and go hunt. But when you come back home, there's still great hunting here. Oh, yeah. There's great things to do in New England. Well, don't be telling everybody. Yeah. Oh, I tell everybody about it all the time. Because the thing, the challenge that that occurs here as an outdoorsman or a sportsman is it's it's a lot harder. Like when you go out and you hunt in a different state in the Midwest or whatever, it comes a little bit easier because of the challenges and in, in, in tribulations that you go through here in New England. I don't know if it comes easier. Um, <laughs> you know, I think I think I think it's you have your difficulties wherever you, you go and do that. Um, I, I think there's a lot of people in New England, um, and you know, uh, you know, there's a lot of hunters out here. There's every piece has a tree stand on mm -hmm. it, as I put it. Um, so there's a lot of pressure to animals. There's that kind of stuff. But if you know you what you know, and you're a good outdoorsman, and you get out there and you knock on doors and you find properties, there are good deer, there are good turkey, there are mm -hmm. good bear. Like you say, you can be in tuna grounds in a couple hours, and you can be four hours away uh, fishing the Plasky Salmon Run, the world's mm -hmm. you know, largest. You know, we call it endless seasons, and we've got beautiful mountains, beautiful terrain, beautiful ag. Um, you know, we, we don't have maybe the quantity of deer of the Midwest and some of these other places or some of these, you know, 200-inch deer, but they're out there. There's a few, you know, and you mm -hmm. got to work for them. Um, so, yeah, you do get a lot of trials and tribulations. I say you're not only hunting the animal, you're hunting the hunter at the same time, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so there is a lot of that. So when you do have that success or you do finally get that doe or see a deer after not seeing one for two weeks, it's 
you feel really good about it. I mean, because you, you had to normally work pretty hard to get it up here. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's generally, you know, how it goes. And I think, you know, New England and New York and a lot of these places, they influence a lot of things, but also like those Western hunters in, in our market, they influence a lot of things. Right. So, uh, but very different demographics. We love hunting out West. We love hunting here. Um, it's just a little different, you know, so, yeah. but it's great to, you know, go and do that, but then also to be, hopefully get out in your backyard or your local town and find somewhere to go do it. You know, I, I find even when I'm driving in the cities, cause I cover all of new England, I'm always still looking down that back alley and there's a deer path or there's a look, a <laughs> creek running under the river, guys fishing something, you know, so it's pretty cool, you know. Caleb, did you grow up in in the hunting world, like like from a small kid? Did your dad hunt or? No, so uh, my family wasn't into it at all. I'm actually that third generation removed from the farm. So when I actually started getting into this about 15 years ago, I didn't get into it till I was in my late 20s. Um, 95% of people were removed from the farm and where their food comes from. And my father, he was a doctor, a uh, stay-at-home mother who had a couple different jobs, we grew up very much in the city, you know, to slight outskirts. So it wasn't, you know, super populated, but it was nice. But uh, I started fishing when I was like, I found out I could do it for free at 15 until I was 16. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't start shooting a bow until I was in my late 20s and moved upstate after college and just got hooked. Bow hunting's what hooked me and got me fully out into it. And now, I mean, now I do everything. I mean, now it's, I'll hunt anything or fish anything anywhere. I just, the people are great. The community is great. It's the... You know, like Rich was saying, the consumers, they're the best. They're the best part about it. Um, and, th- and then all the people I get to meet, you know, all the dealers, all the people like you guys, like just anybody in this, they're really cool people normally, people that you want to hang out with because they have like like interests, like ways of life and all of that. So, uh, yeah, I, I didn't grow up in it at all. And then I, uh, you know, I, I, I really enjoyed it. I uh, The way I get into it and I tell people to get into it, you know, that rush when there's an animal in front of you. There's no drink or drug or any feeling you've ever felt like that in the world. And it's so strong and so good. I'd sit every day till the day I'm gone to feel it one more time. And people don't understand that in the today's world. And, and they hear that and they're like, maybe I want to try that. So, uh, and then I got to, when I took new hunters and started guiding, feel theirs. And it's even better than yours. Because mm-hmm. now I'm not just shaking the, you know, couple seconds before the couple seconds after. Now I'm shaking the whole 50 minutes because I know how much can go wrong and I just want their success and none of it's in my control. Right. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's an amazing thing. And, and the, the people you meet are so good. It's, it's the relationships that you're going to have for life, you know, and, and it's, you always see something cool. It's not just, I killed an animal every time I went out. It's, you might not see everything, but you see a beautiful sunrise or, you know, it's your boy catching a frog, you know, while you're out there scouting for a turkey property. It's, it's just, it's just a beautiful way of life is, is what it really is. And it's uh, something I want. And I think that the general population needs, um, and just everybody to get into it because, you know, uh, I want to control my food. I want to control where everything comes from. I'm, uh, you know, getting well more into that organic lifestyle because I don't like what's being put out in the grocery stores. I don't like everything that's going on with mass farming and GMO foods and all this other stuff. And, uh, I want to control where my meat and my protein sources come from as well as gardens and any of that kind of stuff. And I think, and I try to share that with everybody who's out there. Um, and I challenge everybody to, get one person into something new in any aspect of what they're doing. So maybe, yeah, you do archery and you love it, but maybe you've never bow fished. So by doing that and getting you into that and you getting somebody else or something into it, we're going to continue to grow this sport, save these sports, all be able to do what we want to do in the outdoors and have a great outdoor community. So, uh, yeah. And, and now I think it's the numbers are as high as 98 to 99% of people are removed of, you know, from the farm, their food sources, hunting, fishing, uh, this kind of environment and it's just they've never been exposed and when you're that that far from ever even knowing that it's out there it just goes away so uh it, it's an interesting you know thing um but it, it is growing i do like we say there's a tree stand in every property next year there there's people getting into it and it's out there and there's an interest out there uh we're seeing all these places these organic farms these organic uh you know uh farmers markets on the weekends where people are looking to control their food they're looking to get more in touch with where their stuff comes from and uh there's some great programs like these field to fork programs and stuff where they're educating people in you know how to harvest a deer or an animal ethically they feed them they educate them they teach them about bows and crossbows and get them using them and then they have a mentor who takes them out they harvest 
uh, and then they come back, they donate it to the program, teach them how to butcher it, clean it, and they share it again with the program. And a lot of people actually who are getting into this were organic and vegans, and they said if they could c- control where their meat and foods come from, they would get into it. And a lot of them thought it was like reading a, a book and they would be done. And I took this course and I realized it's a chapter in a never ending book mm-hmm. and they became sportsmen and outdoors people. So we are seeing growth in, in certain markets and that, but, uh, we do, we do a lot to push out to kids, groups, schools, boy scouts, girl scouts, anything we pretty much can, um, to just try to get them out there and shooting and, and doing stuff and, and seeing, you know, our lifestyle, our way of life and, and just sharing it with them because it is a great, great way to live and and i mean you guys know you're all outdoorsmen who who live it every day so and and it, the thing is the way of life and th- and that's what it is it's a way of life where you know you think when you get into you know the sport and you say you probably see it a ton richard where guys come in and they're they want to get into target shooting and they might pick up a recurve and then next you know they're they're in montana elk hunting you know because they got bit by that bug and then they realize that there is another chapter there's another turn turn uh, page to turn to see what else is out there i mean it, it goes it's endless when you start to dive into it it's endless you might not you know you might pick up a bow at a local archery shop and then you might become a competition skeet shooter or something because there's so many things to do within it it doesn't have to be hunting i mean richard nope. you, you know you how did you get into it you got into it in the target world or how it- yeah so i started off in the in the target world um my father is a accomplished archer through the years um so i i grew up around archery um he he pretty much lived on the national and international competition stage there for years and years and years um so i got into it more on the target end and it's funny because the best part about archery and back in the day and i can remember it as a kid just going out with your bow just out in the field just by yourself, enjoying it, relaxing, um, you know, and then that that obviously sparked my fire. Um, and then once I started working for Hall's Arrow over 20 years ago, I was a target archer. Um, and you can't really, it's hard to work in an archery shop and not indulge in some hunting. Um, and I started really slowly off through the years, uh, you know, different people. Uh, Mark Hall, my father, you know, Marcus, you mm-hmm. know, different people that kind of took me in and showed me the basics and got me started in the right direction. And, and it's, it's kind of like Caleb was saying, you, you get that bug and you start doing it and you finally get something and it, it just, it takes you over and it's a whole different way of life. And I mean, I don't get to hunt as much as I do, but God, it's the most enjoyable weeks of my year. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're going out and you're relaxing, you're in the woods and, you know, and I see that all the time with customers. You know, you might get somebody that starts off as target, you know, and they get into 3D, and next thing you know, like, hey, I think I want to I want to try this. I want to keep going. So let's get you the tools that you need to do it correctly and ethically, and let's, let's do it, you know. Um, I also see a lot more now where there's a lot of guys like you guys that are hunters, and you guys are in the woods, and you're great outdoorsmen, and you just start talking to your friends. And there's different people out there, and it's, hey, well, what do you, oh, you know, I, I go hunting, and they start, hey, that sounds like it could be pretty fun, you know. And it's it's hard that almost each and every one of us is an ambassador to the, to the sport. You know, you you, you pull, push on your knowledge, and, hey, you know, yeah, I'll bring you out. Let's, let's, let's see what you like it, and it's it's great. You know, I see these people all the time, whether they're, whether they're newbies or seasoned veterans, and uh, they all have the same smile on their face when they walk through the mm-hmm. door. You know what I mean? It's just, it, it can consume you, you know? I think one of the things that, you know, and especially, you know, do a lot of youth hunting and getting new people into it, but I think one of the things is, like, you know, it's it's just the guy in the coffee shop, and you have a conversation, and you start talking about a deer that you were chasing or whatever, and that passion, and they're like how can you be so passionate about something? And I think it sparks like a curiosity to them sometimes. And they're just like, I want to try that. You know, like, like (laughs) really, they're like, how can someone be so passionate about killing something? Because it's amazing. It's not, it's, it's that, it's that driving force to, 
that particular animal or you know that that certain gobble or you know what i'm saying like there's a there's that that passion in us and that instilled in us that like we want it so bad and people are like why would he want it so bad and they they go and they do it and then now dude i have friends that never hunted before and started hunting with me when i was in my late teens that are like surpassed me and these guys are going all over the country killing things and they because they just got bit by that bug yep. and they their passion went somewhere else i mean we're meat eaters it's it's an it's a natural thing i mean we've been hunters i mean every person in the entire world has hunters in their past family somewhere down the line yep. and they wouldn't be where they're at without them so it, it's very much a part of us is it's in there whether you know it or not and i think it's just bringing that out it could be like you say there's guys they hear that turkey gobble and they're all of a sudden five years going 10 states in the spring to kill as many and shoot as many as they can uh or, or you know, other guys like i love doing it too but i mean I, i'm a bow a bow white tail kind of person you know mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff but then all of a sudden you start oh i'm gonna go bear hunting or i'm gonna mm-hmm. go mule deer hunting or you know and you start it evolves and your passions evolve and, and you do more with it so it, it's just great all around so it's uh it's, it's it's funny that you say that because so steve if you asked steve about turkey hunting what three years ago he would have said i'm not a turkey hunter this dude hunts more states and goes to more places and kills <laughs> mm-hmm. more turkeys than i have and i'm supposed to be a turkey hunter like i'm like dude <laughs> he loves it just ate up on it man get the bug it's it's crazy what it what it what it turns into <laughs> yeah it's great it's uh yeah you, you never know where you're gonna end up like you say you might start just doing a little bit of archery or something there and you end up skeet shooting or duck hunting or turkey or but you find it and it's all good and 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 the people are all good in it so and the people you meet Mm. it's crazy that you can you know like like sitting here now like you know we all come from different assets of of the hunting the hunting world right but we all can can share an equal bond that we could be friends for 25 years right Mm -hmm. like but not be in the same realm at all you know what it's 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 crazy to me that you know you have that common interest and can be such good friends and not even do the same thing Yep. In the hunting world, we talk about not to get getting together after years. You automatically have something to talk about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're swapping stories right away. Oh, that's like when you see every deer mount or everything out there, and people just say, "Oh, you got a you got a, a dead deer on the wall," or they don't understand it. Well, I never understood it when I was a kid either. I just saw the deer on the wall. Well, now that I harvested these animals and I know how much work can go into them, and the stories behind them when you watch them for multiple years or this or whatever, um, it it's a memory it's a story that lasts with you for a lifetime um and it's like like my boy i just took him fishing and he caught one of the biggest perch i've ever seen in my life i remember when i was 12 i caught a pike and my dad mounted it for me as my birthday present well i still remember that trip i'm talking about my family trip and the memories i had and how good that was so i'm mounting this fish for my boy just because i know he's going to remember that and fishing with his dad when he was a kid for years to come um, and it's the same reason, like I've kind of, like he said, anybody will take you hunting cause we want to get you into the sport and all that. And where I get hung up with a lot of hunters out there is I'll teach you how to hunt, but you're not going to hunt my buck. Well, I had a big deer that I was hunting and I hunted it by myself for a while. And I finally got fed up and I said, I'm taking all my friends hunting with me and we're going to sit that whole ridge. And if something comes out, it's going to go down. And my wife said, you know, somebody, one of your buddies is going to shoot your deer. And I said, it's not my deer first off to begin with. And I said, and I hope he does. Cause then I get to see him. I get to hang him on the wall of him and I'm going to have bourbon with my buddy for life telling stories about that and how we shot it together. I said, and that is better than me hunting by myself to harvest that. And I'm trying to get that through to a lot of other people out there because that's what it's about and that's what really takes it to the next level. And that's, you know, it takes it takes a true man to, to, to admit something like that, right? Because, you know, us as outdoorsmen, and it's something that, you know, as a switch, it took like a switch because we get so keyed in on certain deer. Or we like, you know, and that's my deer. And I don't want to hunt with my buddies because they might shoot my deer and this, that, and the other thing. But there's a point in your life where it just turns and you're just like, you know what, if I can share that memory with somebody, that's really all that it matters. And, you know, what's kind of funny is, in like, in my head, there was a point where, like, I was so focused on building this brand and killing things and big animals, and I ruined friendships because of it. Like, I'd be in the Midwest, and we'd be hunting, and, you know, I shot a real big deer, and then the next year I went there, and I'm like, F off all of you, and I'm going on my own, and I'm going hunting. Well, I just ruined friendship with three different people because i was so intrigued in killing a big deer in out of state again that i didn't care about hurting someone else's feelings and when i came back home 
it was totally different because I had a whole different outlook on it. Like it like snapped in my mind. Like, you know what? You may never be able to spend deer camp with those guys ever again. You might not be able to have a friendship like that ever again. And it's, and it's, it's more important to have that friendship than it is to kill a big deer, Mm -hmm. to tell the stories of shooting spike bucks instead of shooting one eighties. Like it's just, it's totally different, man. And you cannot forget that. Like, that's why we do it. It's the camaraderie, the campfire. Like that's really what the deer camp is about, man. I mean, it's. When you're old and you can't do it anymore and you're sitting there looking at the mounts and the, and the stories and the memories, I mean, that that's what you've got. And, I mean, do you want to have the, the good ones like that with your, your friends and your family and these lifelong people that you've met through this? I mean, that's what it's about. I mean, I sell products. I've sold them for years and years. And I, I tell guys, you know, the best part about this is the relationship that we're building um, and, and us being able to do this for the rest of our lives together because I don't care if I'm selling it today or not tomorrow. I'm still going to be hunting with you in 15 years, yeah, true. you know, and that, that's what, that's what this is about, you know, and it's, it's grown for me just, just being in it and doing it this way and with, with people who are like-minded like this, like mm-hmm. us coming together. So it's, it's good. It's, you know, one of the things that like we've been, we've been doing a ton of is, is spending time with our old men, mm-hmm. like our dads, like, you know, Steve went out and rifle hunting with his dad. I went and turkey hunting with my old man, like, because you kind of lose sight of that sometimes. Like you get very, very structured in that. And, you know, there was a story I tell all the time is, you know, there was November 7th, there was a 20 degree change in, in weather. I was chasing a big buck. I had already shot and missed at him, right? And my phone rang at 8.30 in the morning. It was my dad. He had just shot two small bucks or a doe and a buck or whatever. And I started to like have a conversation with my dad. And I'm like, dad, it's November 7th, the temp change. I'm like, I'm not getting out of the tree stand right now. And I hung up the phone and I was doing an interview to the, my camera. And I started to shed a tear because... There might be a November 7th that my dad doesn't call me to ask me to track a deer. Hmm. So what did I do? I closed up the camera, packed all my stuff, got down, and I went and helped my dad drag out a deer. Because you 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 lose sight of that, man. And that's that's why you're there. That's why, you know, you went fishing with your dad and got a, you know, got a pike and you remember those things. Just like your kid's going to remember those things. Those things don't go away. Yep. They don't go away. And especially in the outdoors. No, I mean, that's what it's all about. <laughs> I don't mean to get all sentimental, but it's, mm. it's, it's one of those things. And, and people lose that, though. And, and what I'm trying to drive home is that, you know, that this sport brings together so many different assets of, of life. For I mean, sure. it's, it's crazy. And, and whether you're archery hunting or gun hunting, it doesn't matter. I mean, we're all here for the same thing. Oh, well, that's why we started this partnership with you guys. You guys seem like very like-minded people. And Richard, I trust everything. You know, we've we've done business together for 15 years, and we're friends in addition to that. So uh, when you said this would be a good fit for you guys and us to kind of get some stuff going together, we, we thought it was a great, you know, good fit. And, and if, you know, all the people that you guys touch and reach and, and work with are, are similar to that, it's just going to be good and we're all – we're all going to grow that family of us together, mm-hmm. us outdoorsmen. Out- fishing like a local isn't just about catching fish. It's about connecting with the environment and the people who call it home. It's about hearing the stories and traditions that have been passed down for generations and sharing unforgettable moments with the people you meet along the way. Fishing like a local is having an experience that stays with you forever. And with Fishing Booker, you can experience it too no matter where you are. Discover your next adventure on Fishing Booker. Hunting boots are a critical component of any successful hunt. Whether walking a short distance to your blind or trudging miles through rugged terrain, your feet are carrying the load. Without the right boots, you could give up early and lose out on that trophy just over the ridge. At Midway USA, we make selecting boots for your next hunt easier. With just a few clicks of a mouse, you can decide on what's important, like waterproofing, insulation, size, width, and savings. For just about everything for shooting, hunting, and the outdoors, check out MidwayUSA.com. The 1911 is one of the most iconic firearms in history. Designed by John Browning, the 1911 was the standard issue sidearm of the U.S. military from 1911 to 1985. While Colt produced the original, almost every major firearm company has produced its own version. It's wildly revered for its reliability, crisp trigger, and is still a favorite for all types of shooters. Whether you're looking to buy or build a 1911, and just about everything for guns, log on to MidwayUSA.com. Boat Trader, America's largest boating marketplace, offering easy financing and over 100,000 boat listings to choose from. 
Sell, find, and finance new or used boats on America's largest boating marketplace. Visit BoatTrader.com to get started. Doors, women, everybody in it. It's it's super important. Like one of the things that we say, like some of the people that we, you know, that we, we surround ourselves with are just good, like-minded people. Like I don't care, you know, if, if nobody listened to this podcast ever again or watched our YouTube or whatever, I would still be sitting here doing this just to share those memories down the road, you know, like because it's important to us and what we have, you know, like how many times you look at old pictures old polaroid pictures of of deer that you shot in your teens and you're like that's the most amazing thing ever documenting that and being around those people is is awesome it definitely is i can imagine like being at shows how many people walk up and tell their story and it probably gets annoying by the end of the day but you still listen because you're like i really want to hear their story oh and they were they really want to tell you and i mean it's it's part of it. It's just like this, like you say. It's it's all like hunting camp, being around that campfire, mm-hmm. just telling stories, you know, growing the same way. You know, you sit there and you talk to each other and figure out what what broadhead you like or, mm-hmm. or what's better of this and or what makes you better because you just want to be a better outdoorsman. You ethically want to do it. You know, ethically harvest the animals to the best mm-hmm. of your ability and 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 have great stuff to do it and, and enjoy it while you're out there. And that's that's just what it's about Most important thing yeah. yeah rich do you just want to dive through some of the things that hall's archery offers for those that are kind of local and might be able to want to come down and do different things yeah so uh we're a full indoor range and pro shop uh we've been here for almost 70 years now um so a long time we actually have one of the largest youth programs in the country uh we teach anywhere from probably about 150 to 200 kids a week that we actually have come through our doors, um, recurves, compounds, bare bow, um, all different styles. Um, and then on top of that, obviously, we're a full range and pro shop. So we're working on bows and crossbows and fletching arrows. And um, also one of the big parts of our business is um, we actually sell a lot of equipment to camps and schools and 4-H's. Um, so really kind of gets back on that, hey, let's get this younger generation shooting these bows and getting them interested um and i see it every year every fall i get kids that come in and you know they shot bows at summer camp and hey you know little johnny really really liked that this summer and we're we're looking to keep him going well good let's get him in here let's keep him going with it um so it's it's that's a a big part of our business and and helping trying to grow the sport um so it's it, it pretty much if it has to do with archery we probably do it here at hall zero um we got a you know walk up range we have automatic targets which a lot of people are not familiar with but we actually have targets that actually come back and forth we were the first place in the country to have these um so it's been it's like duplicated. A pistol range. it's kind of like a <laughs> pistol range it's been duplicated but probably not as good as we did but um you know it's a lot of fun it allows people to shoot at their own pace which is awesome um but yeah we we pretty much do it all we do everything if it has to do with a bow and arrow we we can work on it fix it get it whatever you need so that's important yeah you know a lot of people don't know because there's not that many i mean there's only a handful of of bow shops nowadays like Mm -hmm. it seems like you know or good bow shops because the thing is like with your bow like you want to it has to be trusted right because Mm -hmm. you're gonna go you're gonna go into the woods with that bow and you only get one shot at that one deer, whatever. You know what I'm saying? That one target deer. So you want to make sure that you go to the right place to have them fix, fix it and, and work on it. I mean, you go to your big box store, you don't know you might be getting the guy from the shoe section selling you a bow. <laughs> so, you know, I would always recommend going to a pro shop. And, uh, I mean, unfortunately, I've seen a lot of those mishaps um that the bigger box stores can can produce um you know right-handed people that walk out with a left-handed bow you know and i'm not going to say any main major names but they're out there uh but you know the biggest thing is is that they're getting people involved and uh you know after they get that equipment a lot of these people do go out there and find their local shops because they do need a place to to shoot and they need a place to learn um so it, it's a great thing, you know, as at the end of the day, they're putting uh, bows in people's hands and we're putting bows in people's hands and we're getting them shooting and we're getting them interested and, and we're keeping them interested. That's the biggest thing. Once you get them, you got to retain them, right. you know, and then keep that going on. So it's, it's, it's fantastic. Well, you know? I think that's why we push the local dealer and the independent dealer hard because getting it set up is, is very important because if the bow isn't set up and it doesn't fit, fit them right, um, 
you lose interest right away. I always use the example, you know, you take a kid, um, you take him fishing. Do you take him for trout where he catches one all day and he hates it? Or do you take him for sunnies where he catches one every cast and he's begging you to fish for the rest of his life? Well, the same thing's true with a bow. If you can pick it up and hit the bullseye or knock the apple off of, you know, Mm -hmm. the target, you're going to keep shooting it. You're going to be, you know, want to do it. It's fun. When you pick it up, it's not set up to you and you can't hit a, you know. Yeah. Car at, at ten yep. feet, the mm-hmm. kid lays it down and he never picks it up again and he'll never shoot. So uh, it, you know, getting it set up right and, and that. Um, so, but you know, anywhere that's getting them into a bow is getting them into the sport, and then a lot of times they do end up going and, and pursuing it more. So it's, uh, but you know, just avoiding those frustrations from the start that we see with people where they're just not right, and, and then they can lose interest. That that's where we try to just steer you. Well, it's it's funny like when you walk into halls, right? You come down the aisle, and there's always you know it's you go into some bow shops or the big box stores, and the bow tech is it's nowhere to be found. You can't you can't talk to them anywhere. But when you walk in here, there's always a bow tech on the line for some reason. Like every time I come in here, there's somebody is on the line shooting with somebody, walking them through the steps and the paces, like just just always like involved and that's like a very important thing when you go home you're like oh you know rich really helped me out he really got me on target like this is perfect or if you need a last minute like it's just it's good and it's personable and that's what's needed i mean like Mm -hmm. because you can get distracted and not and not have and like caleb just said like and not have a good experience and then you're not gonna relay that and you're gonna end up losing interest in doing it it's it's a matter of getting that that correct instruction off in the beginning you know, if you learn right and you get the right skills in the in the very beginning, you're going to be a lot more successful. So it's just a matter of setting people right to succeed. Mm-hmm. And I think once you kind of do that, it's, you know, the, the sport takes over mm-hmm. from there. Well, and then it becomes like voodoo because once he sets you up <laughs> right and you harvest an animal, now he's the only one who could ever set That's up the right. ball right or touch the ball and you trust nobody else. <laughs> but it also goes the opposite way if it's it doesn't great. go that way. But, yeah, that, that, it's, it's, it's good, yeah. The other big thing that I, I like about halls is when if you come in you need your bow worked on, you get with a bow tech. You stay. That bow tech stays with you until your bow's complete. You pay. You walk out the door. We've all been to bow shops where you walk in and the guy you're working with, he's cutting arrows for one guy. He's working on your bow. There's seven different things going on, and he's not giving you 100 percent of his attention. Yep. Drives me nuts. But when I come in here, wh- whoever I I'm working with, I am with him. He's with me. We get everything set. When I'm done, he goes. He goes to the next person and. That's the only way to do yep, it. I want to make sure you're happy. We're, we're working together here, and we're going to get it right. And it's super important when it comes to archery because, like, you, you're, you know, like, me and Steve and Caleb and you, you're probably so mm. particular about your bow. Like, just like it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm very particular on who plays with my bow. Like, they, <laughs> I, like, I, you know, because you just don't want something wrong. You know, like, like if it, because you don't want to go into a place and then step back 10 steps. You want to be moving forward 10 steps. So that's a very, and thing with a lot of local bow shops, like, that's very important is like making sure that you're ahead of the game when you walk out instead of being behind the game. Yep. And, and it's like Steve and, and having that confidence in what, you just had done when you walk out of the shop Mm -hmm. you know and that's a big thing for hunters i mean your your gear is (laughs) you don't want to mess around with your gear so the last thing you want to do is be sitting in a tree stand on november 7th thinking ah should be all right (laughs) and then you hear we're about to find out right now (laughs) well you know how much can go wrong so having as much as you can go right and that confidence Mm -hmm. is huge for sure i mean I think it's one of the good things about Bowtech in itself. Is it has so many different options to be able to change and be like, you know, going back on it. Like, there's so many things to change. The hand, the you know, the grip, the, you know, comfort to performance, the valley. I mean, there's so the many. The ability to well, play. To you never know play. when you might drop your bow out of the tree, too. So you can always go <laughs> home and, and, and make sure it's tuned that way, too. <laughs> I call, call Trevor up. Hey, Trevor, I'm going to need that Bowtech. I, I got to hunt tomorrow. I got to change this draw length real quick. So true. 
true. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm the one that drops the bow out of the tree. I'm notorious for that. So <laughs> You're not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> Are you good for that too, Caleb? <laughs> no. But, but when you talk to every shop in New England, you hear well, a few. You hear some good ones. <laughs> I've, I've had at least three or four that have been run over by miscellaneous vehicles. Oh, and, oh, oh. yeah. That's probably one of the things of being Botex in like a in a bow in a in a bow shop is like some of the most craziest things walk through the uh, door. You see some some seem like some crossbows seem like bombs get ready to go off when they're when they come in. But uh, you know, yeah, it's it's we've had some interesting ones. You know, you know bows run over and you know things happen. Seen you know? it all, but guys still find a way to wow you every year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, I didn't think that was possible. Well, oh, I swear, I just uh, shot it. And I don't know what happened. Is I, this under warranty? Uh, yeah, yeah. I tell you, you throw those Excalibur crossbows out of planes. Are you going to warranty this stock when I dropped it off a bridge? Like, why were you hunting on a bridge, sir? You know, but. Uh, it, these things do happen, and these are questions in real life that you get sometimes. Caleb, did you miss the flashlight that was strapped to the bottom of it? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> Wouldn't have been me. I, I know a guy at a manufacturer. <laughs> I would have just replaced uh, the stock. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but, yeah, uh, it's uh, it's good. It's a good sport. I love it. Yeah. Well, I got one last question, then we can go and have some dinner and hang out and really kick it off. Um, Caleb, what drives you outdoors? Well, um, I, I would say it would have been that passion and that feeling um, of having that, you know, that adrenaline rush when that, that animal is in front of you. But I, I think it's changed and evolved through the years like anything does in hunting. And I think it's the relationships and the stories and the people. Because, uh, I mean, uh, you just see it when you deal with your parents, your grandparents and all that. We're all not here for forever. And, and in the end, that's what you've got when you're sitting there in the nursing home or you can't walk anymore. Or you can't climb the mountains. You can't drag the deer up by yourself. Uh, but it's that memory of you doing that with your dad that one day, like you said, he's not going to call you on November 7th. So I think that's what really does it for me. Uh, and I think it's like the best thing out there in this world that I found is, is something whole and something you can really relate to. You can make a part of your life and feel good about. You can sleep good at night about. Um, and, and it's just amazing. The, the people are where it's at. So, I'd have to agree. Richard, what drives you outdoors? That's not fair. You asked Caleb first. He yeah. took my answer. No. <laughs> I mean, Someone's you, going got to you got more answer. time to think about <laughs> yeah. it. I was actually being the good one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Caleb School, on the spot. took my answer. And what do you do? You're like, <laughs> yeah. you're no. I mean, honestly, it's it's a lot of the, it's pretty much the same thing. A lot of it's the, the relationships, um, you know, and it's you know quick quick story brother-in-law years and years hunter gun hunted shot a few doe never got a buck never got a buck never got a chance to get a buck and two years ago we finally got him into a crossbow and we got him some some good land in new york that he could hunt and kind of got him out there a few times and he finally got his buck now it was a spike like three-pointer but you know what (laughs) He was the happiest man I'd ever seen. He finally got his buck. And it's like, you know, it's not a very big one. It doesn't matter how big it is. It matters that you're happy and that you had a good time and you got a memory while you're doing it. And he said, you're right. That's that's what it's about. It's about the memories and, and, and the people. And and that's probably the biggest thing that I've that, that keeps me going is, is the people I uh, – the relationships I've met and the people I've met and – and uh it's it's fantastic absolutely i mean we wouldn't be here today if we didn't have the relationships that we had you know for the years of coming in and and talking and friendships and throughout friends and stuff like that i mean it's it's super important one of the mottos that we live by is hunt your own hunt right and that's one of the things that we we push and we we drive home right because i might be chasing a 160 steve might chase in a a 200 incher but that doesn't mean that you have to shoot a 200 incher or 180 it doesn't mean that if if you're gonna shoot a four corn man i'm gonna congratulate you just like you just shot a world record because that's your hunt that's what you wanted that's what you wanted out of this and you're happy about it you don't need to go on to facebook to justify it to anybody that oh you know it's not the biggest one in the world but you know whatever it doesn't matter that's your hunt that's what you're happy about that's where we're happy as long as you're happy with your hunt i mean that's that's the most important thing to be honest Except for Jake's. Don't shoot Jake's. Yeah, don't shoot Jake's. Ah. <laughs> Save those for Steve. <laughs> no, uh, he's no. coming to a state near you. 
<laughs> Unless you're my daughter, it's your first yeah. one. Then go ahead and shoot that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, okay, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. They eat good. They absolutely. all eat good. So. No, youth, youth, I mean, we don't really care, honestly. Like, oh. what does it really matter? Just Steve was saying that because oh. sometimes, you know, I get very excited <laughs> and I, I will shoot a Jake. Like, if he comes in like a man, he's going to be treated like one. Comes That's my. <laughs> super Jake. <laughs> uh, hey. <laughs> It all depends on it. Have you hunted all season? It's the last day of the season. Sometimes the rules change in the game, right? That, that's it. But, go down. but I agree. I mean, you know, just getting out there, enjoying it. That's the most. I think that's mm-hmm. the most important. And, and yeah, hunt, hunt your hunt. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't think you could say it much better than that. Uh, and and just meet the people. Get out there, you know, and and, and do it. You know, you've got to do it to enjoy it. And get out there and make and some memories. It's I, I th- it all really h- hits home right now. Just like the last five days of turkey season right like you you gave up opening day to hunt with your dad when you could have been out there hunting your own bird right um thursday we hunted together only one of us is on the gun friday i went with maddie and filmed him shoot a bird sunday i, w- I could have went to rhode island by myself but sean polk came up mm-hmm. i hunted with him and it's all about i hunted with I my could, girlfriend i could have hunted five Sunday. days straight by myself and killed probably a lot more birds but it's like you know what you only get so many opportunities for me to hunt hunt a morning hunt with maddie or sean mm-hmm. polk's only up yeah. for that weekend and he goes back to virginia you, you can't say no to those opportunities mm-hmm. you know you really can't because those, those are everlasting things like yeah it's great that you know my trophy room is big and has a ton of animals in it but and i want more in it but it doesn't matter that doesn't matter when you're gone it doesn't matter because someone's going to tell that story and that's that's the most important yeah. thing no uh, it matters when you uh you know you're hunting turkey for two days in kentucky and then you drive 15 hours straight back so you can hunt turkey with your little girl in the morning because that's, that's more important right. than you hunting two three more days in kentucky yeah you're right. gonna get a bird but right. you can't hunt every morning with your your little girl exactly. while she's a little girl so no nope. yeah. no nope. Well, Caleb, why don't you tell everybody where they can kind of find Bowtech or check them out or, you know, websites, Instagram, so on and so forth. Yeah, definitely. You can go right on, you know, Bow Archery. Uh, I'm sorry, BowtechArchery.com uh, in any of the affiliated brands, you know, Black Gold Archery, Excalibur Crossbows. They're all out there. Um, and you can check out all our new 2024 products. You can get information on these uh, great events that we're going to be hosting here in, in Henry Archery out there, as well as go on there and find any of your local dealers on our dealer locators um, and just see everything we're doing out there in the whole archery world. So I, I hope you guys, I encourage you all to, to look us up. Go check out your local archery shops. Uh, get involved. Check out. Shoot a bow. Shoot a crossbow. Absolutely. And Richard, you want to plug where uh, where they can find you? So, yep, I'm right here in uh, Manchester, Connecticut. So you guys have any needs or you want to come shoot one of these bow techs, come on down and we're, we'll get you squared away. Awesome, guys. It's been it's been a blast. Um, the night will continue to go on, and we appreciate you guys and look forward and to, to building these relationships and more stuff with you guys. We'll have some more videos and some really good stuff for everyone to check out. And until then, everyone, thanks for taking the ride right here on the Outdoor Drive.